But of course, the next step is we actually have to c connect the texture to the force field. If I just play it right now, we're not going to see any difference because so far the fractal texture is only applied to the shader applied to the plane. So uh, let's bring up the uh, hypershade. I'm going to select the plane. Again, I'm on the N rigid shape one node. And uh, I'm going to set the field magnitude to something like six, so it's nice and strong, and the field distance to three. And then I'm going to scroll down to force field maps in Hypershade. I'm going to switch to the textures tab, middle mouse button drag, fractal one to the field magnitude map slot. And now that's how it's connected. So uh, if we take a look at this, I'm going to select fractal one in uh, Hypershade and do graph input and output connections because I want you to notice how the texture is actually connected to the force field. This little blue line here is what's connecting the texture to the force field. If I hover over that you can see that fractal 1 out alpha is connected to n rigid shape 1 field magnitude map. So that means that the alpha output, in other words the black and white values of the texture are being connected to the uh, rigid shape node. So if I edited this texture and added some colors, you know, using a color balance or something like that, it's not really going to affect the uh, the force field. Only the uh, the out alpha, the black and white values, are what's going to uh, affect. It. So I can close Hypershade, and again, I'm in 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 rigid shape node tab. I want to make sure that field magnitude type is set to texture. And now when I play the scene, what you're going to see is you get sort of a variety of heights. The end particles over the white parts of the texture are going to be repelled by the surface and uh, the end particles over the black parts are receiving you know a field magnitude of zero. The other thing I'd like to point out is the field scale. This is basically a scale that uh, determines the strength of the field over distance. So I'm going to rewind this and play and if I actually edit this graph so that it's just a straight line across, I'm going to get a bit more of an accurate field. You can see now, I mean, it's still, yeah, that's a little bit more accurate. You can actually sort of fine tune the way that the field is applied from the texture by editing the field scale. And you can do tricky stuff like this and you get kind of different effects. You can also animate the position of these individual markers just by you know, selecting them and right, set a key or create an expression or so on and so forth. Uh, so you can get some interesting effects. What I'm going to do is let's, let's reset this so it's just a straight line across. Now a couple things I want to do. Um, at the moment, if I actually rotate this oops, like this. Since the black parts of the field are emitting no value, they're not having any influence or they're setting the field magnitude to zero rather, uh, any end particle that's over the black part is just going to slide off until of course it hits a white part and then you'll see it'll kind of like pop up, which is kind of a neat effect. For a second, rewind it and play, and you can sort of see what happens there. Kind of an interesting effect. You could sort of think, you know, one way you could use this is, I don't know, if there was like water surface over this, these guys could be like fish that have been instanced to the particles. You can sort of see a shoal of fish like swimming away from dolphins or something like that. Like one of those nature documentaries or something. I don't know. Or popcorn or something like that. Lots of lots of different possibilities. What I'd like to do though is I want to edit this so that the rather than just the black parts emitting a zero value value, I want them to emit a negative value so they actually attract the end particles. And to do this, I'm going to write an extremely simple expression. So uh, let's bring up uh, the hypershade just so I can select the texture. So I'm going to go to the textures tab. Select Fractal 1 and open its attribute editor. And I'm going to go down to the um, color balance section right here. So remember that out 
alpha is what's uh, controlling the field. So it's, it's modulating the field magnitude, in other words. So if I play this scene and start messing with alpha gain and bring this down to zero, it's effectively going to set a zero magnitude for the entire thing. So we just get to the back to the situation where it's kind of rolling off. Um, likewise, if I set this to a high value, you know, it's like 10, it's going to just shoot those end particles way off into space. So yet, a, yet again, another way to animate this effect is you could animate the alpha gain. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create an, an expression. Let me set this back to 1. And, and the expression is going to work like this. Uh, I'm selecting the alpha offset field. I'm going to type in equals to tell Maya that I want to enter an expression. And I'm going to put um, minus 0 0.5 times, whoops, sorry, minus 0 0.5 times fractal 1, which is the name of the texture, dot alpha capital G gain semicolon. And what this means now is that the alpha offset is always minus a half of the alpha gain. So if I increase alpha gain, the alpha offset goes down to like negative five. If I lower alpha gain, we get closer to zero. So if I put this on something like three and rewind and let's get a nice view here and close the hypershade or just move it off the screen. see that if I rewind and play the scene, now those black parts of the texture are actually attracting the end particles, so they're not sliding off. So I could lower this down a little bit and you can get sort of... So once I have something like this set up, I like to try and simplify things a bit. Right now I have a field magnitude of 6 and a field distance of 3. I think that's going to get a little bit confusing if I have one value for field magnitude and another in the alpha gain. So what I might do is set the field magnitude down to 1 and from here on out I can just basically modulate field magnitude by uh, editing the alpha gain of the fractal texture. So if I just have one setting that's going to be editing everything then that makes my life a little bit easier. I'll leave the field distance at 3 just because that's a nice obvious height. So if I play this now you can sort of see that it's a little bit toned down. But uh, if I go back to Hypershade and select Fractal 1 and bring this up to like 2, you can see now how it's actually editing the uh, magnitude. So if I set this up to 10 it's going to get a little bit psychotic. So a couple of things that you can do with this technique that are interesting. Let's uh, reset the position and the rotation of our plane. Uh, you can animate the fractal texture itself. So uh, again, if I select the fractal texture, uh, there's a whole bunch of different ways you could do this. I could go to the Place 2D Texture node, and if I rewind and play this, and start to ro you know rotate the frame, you're going to see how rotating this is going to change the position of the texture and that's going to affect how the uh, end particles behave. Set this back to zero. Uh, another way you can animate the texture is back on the Fractal 1 node. Um, I'll go to uh, the Fractal Attributes, turn on Animated and then to actually animate it, I need to set keyframes on the time value. So I'll set at frame one, I'll set the, a key so that the time is zero. And then at frame 800, I'll set time to like, I don't know, two. Set another keyframe. And then as I play this, over time, you can see how the fractal texture is starting to sort of move around. And that's making the uh, end particles bounce up and down as the uh, colors and the magnitude values change over time. So you could do this with uh, actually any kind of texture. You could have an animated file texture, for instance, uh, be uh, applied to the, uh, the, uh, the field magnitude or an animated ramp. Let's take a look at a ramp real quick. Let me bring up the uh, hypershade. I have my other monitor here. And uh, I'm going to go under 
uh, 2D textures. I'm going to create a ramp. Let's uh, select a plane. I'm going to connect the ramp itself to the field magnitude. I'm just going to middle mouse button drag the ramp on top of field magnitude ramp. And then uh, I want to also connect it to the texture just so I can see what's going on. So I've got Lambert 2 selected. I'm going to middle mouse button drag over ramp and drag it over to the color. Now we can see it's applied to the color. And now let's edit the ramp. So I'm going to make the color marker at the top completely black. Get rid of the green, green color marker. All right. And set the one at the bottom just to white. If I play this, you'll see how the ramp is now influencing the uh, the position of the of the field magnitude. So if I start editing the ramp, like I could drag this down. Actually, maybe I should drag this up. You get the idea. You can actually create like kind of cool waves and that kind of stuff. Uh, another thing you could do is you could set the inter uh, sorry you could set the uh, ramp itself to like a circular ramp, and you can sort of see how you can get kind of some interesting effects by editing this. And again, what I'll do is go into color balance, and increase the alpha gain, and that makes these things rise. So uh, a lot of possibilities there for different ways that textures can influence the, uh, the movement of end particles.